So let me talk about uh, what's happened in transit. So over the past 15 years, going back to 2001, our population in Santa Clara County has risen by 12%. These are new people, potentially new transit customers, and new people paying into the sales tax that can fund transit. However, that green line, our avenue, annual revenue hours, has declined. We're 13% lower than where we were in 2001. And that's because it's expensive to live here, and that's reflected in the cost of labor for paying our bus drivers. <coughs> and as time has gone by, it's become more expensive to put out an hour of service, and VTA hasn't really increased the amount of money it spends on transit. In 2015, we spent $320 million on bus and light rail. And if you account for inflation, that's the same amount that we spent in 2001. So no new value spent on transit and a more expensive cost brings down your revenue hours. And that correlates with our ridership, which is the line on the bottom in blue. We know that service levels and ridership correlate strongly. We're down 23% in ridership to, since 2001. But I'll point out, if you start looking at 2005, things have been generally tracking upward and generally keeping pace with population. So that dramatic fall in ridership that Gary Richards was talking about, not borne out by the data. On our fare box recovery rate, uh, VTA is the red line at the bottom. We got as high as about 15% in 2010, and now we're back down to about 12%. And compared to peer agencies that have similar service areas and operate bus and light rail, you can see we are way below. That means that for every trip that is taken, Santa Clara County taxpayers are subsidizing that trip 88 cents on the dollar, much higher than other transit agencies. And that really restricts how much uh, service we can put out if we're paying so much per service hour. Can, can you ask a question? Yes. You compare the cities and the right leadership in cities different than in our area. These are metropolitan areas. But instead right. of saying like Sandag for San Diego, that folks might not know the acronym. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> I don't know the VTA at all. Can you raise your fares versus the other one? Do you guys compare that at all? Uh, VTA has not raised their fares since 2009. So as time goes by, as inflation occurs, we take in value for every fare that we take in. But cash paying customers are only about 15% of our riders. Almost everyone else has an annual pass, a monthly pass, or an eco pass. And our average fare per rider of people in cash in those uh, monthly and annual passes is about $1.55 per uh, ride, but people who use eco passes get a ride for about 50 cents. So as that program grows, we really cut into the money that we take in. So there's this entire fare structure conversation that is also part of this how effective our transit design conversation is. Don't you receive government subsidy for the eco pass rides? Uh, you know, make up I in there. don't know the exact funding stream. Doesn't make up in there. We do get government subsidy for some portion of our operations. I have a question. Yes. Uh, have you ever compared the wait times between buses in those different cities? Because in San Jose, the quickest is 15 minutes on, on major routes, like 23. But in other cities, it's only seven minutes. You are segueing into my next few slides. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 